earlier today, I was thinking about Alteryx and the untapped potential within that package. A lot of people think of Alteryx as just a program for doing simple tasks, modifying data, running one workflow for one type of input file, creating one type of output file. But there's so much more to it than that. You can create wide ranging amazing programs that can handle multiple input file types, can handle creating multiple output file types. It's just uh, up to you as a program developer what you want to do. So today I saw my shirt. It says, <clears throat> go far, feel good. That's what Alteryx makes me do, go far and feel good. So today's lesson is Alteryx Masterclass macros what's the realm of possibility and i'm just going to show one example that i developed within about uh, two or three weeks that features <clears throat> multiple macros multiple input files um, how is it done what are, what's the the concept behind it um, some of the features and i'm not going to go into detail about what it does but just show uh, the, the realm of possibility for people who may be new to, to Alteryx or maybe haven't thought beyond the box that we build for ourselves of this is what it does. There's really a whole world of possibilities. So let's get started. Take a look at um, this particular, dri what I call a driver program. A driver program means that I have a, a primary input file that drives through a series of macros. So just in this one box here, we see an input file feeding into two macros, feeding into another macro over here. And let's start by taking a look at what, what's in, in here, because this is really kind of control center. When I say control center, what I mean is that you can basically specify what you want to do in the program with something like this and this this is an excel file it gets big uh, maybe i should just open the excel file but for now i'm not going to worry too much about that but essentially i have a group by field the group by field allows me automatically to run more of these quote unquote programs at a time than just one uh, so I can group by, which would allow the program to stream in multiple input files and maintain the integrity of those by using the group by approach, uh, as I described in my most recent video. And then I have a run it, a one or zero, which means if it's one, I want to run this particular um, set of input data. And then I have a, a series of inputs that uh, specify not only input files, and uh, so multiple input files and then multiple output files and this goes on out to the right and there's no need to talk about the details of it other than to say that this control sequence allows you to build a program that you can run over time so as your events happen you can just append to that list and then continue to run the workflow under various conditions. Well, what, what might be those various conditions? It could be baseball games, it could be football games, it could be statistical results, it could be anything that you capture during an event. It could be a production run, it could be whatever whatever it is you are using the, the Alteryx workflow for. So I set up the control parameter, or the control sequence, and then I say yes, if it's a one, run it. And this is a case here where I actually, in that file, specify variable input type. So in this column here, I have input file type. I have SMTD versus CSV. I have two different ones. So I use a filter to split that. Now, the requirement here is that when you have two different input files, you're, you've got to create the same output file for later on processing. So although the input files may be different, Ultimately, if you're going to union these together, they have to be the, have the same structure. So going taking a sneak peek into this macro here, what does it do? It's called the SMTD reader. Well, it does 
this. Okay, so it reads something that looks like this, which you wouldn't think of as a normal input file from, <clears throat> from that would go into Alteryx, but what this is is a vertical stack of JSON files with each each JSON record having strategic information in it, and there happens to be millions of these things in here. So I have to read them, I have to parse them, I have to do whatever operations are necessary to get the data out that I need. So that's what this routine does, and when it kicks out its output, that output will be the same output as this other reader, which is just to read a CSV. So what does a CSV reader do? Well, <clears throat> it does this. And th these operations then basically configure the output data to be consistent with the SMTD data. So right there is a great accomplishment. You can read two different types of input. That's not normal for all tricks, but you can do it. And it's only up to your imagination. In fact, having written thousands of workflows, I never had to do that before until I wrote this. So having variable input, it may be uncommon, but the thing is you can read it and the CSV data looks very different than that JSON data. What does it look like? Well, it looks like this, standard CSV file. In fact, all of this data is contained within the SMTD, but you've got to go find it, you've got to go parse, you've got to do a lot more work in the SMTD than you do in in the CSV. Okay, so you got the ability now to run multiple input files. You've got the ability to group them using group by functionality, and you ship them into the main computational routine, <clears throat> noticing that you've got a group by configuration here. You also have questions that have to be answered. One of the secrets of doing this is rather than having to specify the names of all of these fields, these are all the control parameters that are used within this macro. So this is a this is a master class of using group by and control parameters together to accomplish certain goals. And the thing is, is when you set up within this macro, and let's go over and look at this one, uh, we have a lot of action going on in here. In fact, this macro has macros within it. So when you specify these control parameters, one of the, the secrets is when you name these control parameters, you name, for example, I named this one lap code, and I named this one lap distance. So when I name these, these are <clears throat> consistent with fields that either I have in my control parameter uh, file or fields that I have in the data file so that they're automatically mapped. So this thing then runs a whole bunch of operations. And as you can see, it does all of that. Okay, so <clears throat> oh, actually this is not even the right, this is not even the right macro. Um, let's go back and open the right macro. <clears throat> this was another one that's in, that's actually embedded in here. So let's open this one, and this will this will show what I mean by uh, having a lot of operations. So <clears throat> here's control here's control by um, formulations, and we've got all of these operations going on. We've got um, control parameters, and this is where when I name this control parameter, it's called. The, the lap speed results Excel output file. That file name, that that name of that fee, of that control parameter is going to be exactly as it is in that Excel input file. And by doing that, by having the same name, things just automatically map. So this continues on. Lots of operations going on. Lots of control parameters changing things, changing input, changing output. Uh, as you can see, this I developed this all within. Um, I don't know, maybe a few weeks. Uh, lots of stuff going on. Continues on down, more control parameters. Um, <clears throat> we've got lots of different kinds of operations going on, lots of computationally expensive things going on. And eventually we get down to, lo and behold, 
more macros. This macro is the one that I actually opened in the beginning, which is this, this one here. So this is a program that accomplishes a, a huge amount. It, <clears throat> it runs reliably from event to event, given various input. It creates a standard output then, which can be visualized uh, through dashboards or other operations. And this is what I mean by the ability of Altrix to do major, accomplish major programming tasks. This is a program. This is a computer program. It's just formulated in Altrix workflows and macros, embedded macros. And sometimes I embed iterative macros within batch macros to accomplish certain things. Um, just tremendous capability. And you have to take the time to learn the value of the macros. The macros are really what open up the possibilities for you in Alteryx when you have these kinds of complicated factors going into what it is you're trying to, to produce. Uh, having multiple input file types, having lots of different things that need to change from uh, one run to the next. The control parameters are key for that. So this was what I would call um, an Alteryx macro masterclass. And again, without a lot of details of what it does, it's um, an example to, to give inspiration for people who are wanting to get better in Alteryx. So the, um, it produces a beautiful output. I, I really can't show it, but um, <clears throat> this is something to be proud of. It's something for you to work for. Something that uh, you, you've got to challenge yourself and say, I know I, I, know I can do it. I, I can um, formulate this. I can put it together. I can build the pieces. Um, learn how the data flows from one macro into another. Learn. There, there's lots of techniques I use. For example, um, this main macro, this is something, another little user trick. So this is a main macro here where it's receiving a data input stream. This data input stream has certain characteristics. It has all these field, field names, field types. And so what do I do to run this? And I go and I click into this and I look over at the beginning. Well, here's that input. Well, where does that input come from? If I'm, if I'm building this, how do I start? Well, what I, what I do is I start with a file and I do a file configuration. Where does that file come from? How do I create that? Well, what I, my little trick is I go back to the program. When I get to the point where I know what my structure is, I say, okay, this file here is a generic data example of this type of file, of this type of data structure that I use to condition the main macro. So <clears throat> occasionally I will stop, I will write this YXDB out. And then when I go to work within this main macro, if I'm going to be doing some additional work in here, what am I adding components? Um, I got to be able to start somewhere. And so what I start with is that generic input file that I conditioned outside the macro. So every time I go into a new macro, uh, it's actually this one, every time I go right here, every time I go into a new macro, so here it is, the generic data example input file. This will allow me to run this. This will allow me to modify this and to see what I'm doing in this macro. So by having a little system like that it makes it easier for you. Every time, and, and every time I, I have a major new contribution, a, a new component, a, call it a subroutine really, um, like here, <clears throat> this macro, I'm going to have a conditioning macro output. So here's the output that's going to condition this guy. Same thing. Um, so these are the tricks. These are the things you have to learn. You have to have time in the seat. You have to practice. You have to read, watch stuff like I'm trying to produce here. Watch, learn from people who've, who have pushed the limits, and then you'll get better. And before you know it, you'll be creating things like this too. So thanks for listening.